So it's actually kind of interesting. I'm up here in the library in the stacks. I always find this very soothing. It's kind of like an anechoic chamber because the, there are not a lot of reflecting surfaces side to side, so not a lot of echoes. Everything just feels kind of hushed. Anyway, I'm up here because um, of an associative trail. I was tweeting about the class and putting out the last video as a link on the tweet, and it's now gotten embedded in a couple of pages. And what happened next was that one of the people in my Twitter network, which is also a kind of an associational trail, uh, tweeted and actually took a picture of the first page of an analog book. So it was a digital representation of an analog page put out on the internet on a tweet. And of course, every tweet creates a web page. I mean, is this a great world or what? At any rate, um, it was the first page of a chapter on inquiry in a book that a lot of people have recommended to me over the years, but I've never actually read it. And I was coming back with some coffee from the Starbucks, and I thought, I'm going to get that book. Very famous book, and it's uh, up here on the uh, stacks. Let me uh, give you a little picture of what I'm looking at here. So I, I, I know you've seen these before. They're, they're library stacks. <laughs> See, this is why I have a PhD. I know things like that. So you get in this section, and it's really quite amazing. People have been thinking about how to make education better, how to make school better for a long, long time. I mean, look, founding of the American public school system, the achievement gap, unlearned lessons. That's a very bold one. Diane Ravitch has been doing a whole lot of stuff lately. She used to be in favor of all the um, standardized tests that would measure common ability across school curricula, and now she's coming right out against it. There's some stories there I could tell. Education in a free society. I mean, here is the place where everyone is thinking about the thing you're doing, being in school. This is the place where people are doing inquiry projects and these things we call books. They're all about making this experience better. So right down here at the very bottom, there's this book, and the spine is hard to see. And I think it's hard to see because a lot of people have handled it. It's kind of a famous book, so let's get it. Okay, here we go. So what is this book? Well, first of all, it's got an interesting inside cover. Somebody thought it would be good to have a lot of headlines here. Who did that? Hmm. I'm not sure who designed the book. There's probably information in there about that. I have to look towards the back, maybe. Oh, and here is the title of the book, Teaching as a Subversive Activity. And there are some ways in which this whole course is kind of a subversive activity because we're going to be doing really serious and interesting and playful and fun work on the web. And what's more subversive than that? And then here's the last chapter. So what do you do now? And... That's going to be a question we'll be asking ourselves over and over throughout this course. And let's see if it says anything about the... Oh, here we go. Here's the design information. See, this is like that dead rack stuff. It's the stuff that nobody looks at, but I love it. This book was set in Caledonia and Palatino types by Brown Brothers Linotypers. Or is it Linotypers? I don't know. It was printed and bound by Montauk Book Manufacturing Company, Incorporated. Somebody's mommy and daddy worked there. Maybe they're kids, too. Designed by Barbara Lemon. wonder what Barbara Lemon or Lehman did. What other books did she design? Was she all about educational crisis and reform? Was she a teacher herself? I don't know. But it was an associational, an associational trail. No, that's not right. An associative trail. Obviously, it's time for my coffee. I have that up here, too. I'll be taking that back to my office in just a moment. Yes, there's my lovely Starbucks. Um... But it was an associative trail that brought me up here, and it's an associative trail that I'm going to carry back with me in this thing that we call a book. Even though it's quiet study, I just have to stop here for a second and uh, read what's on the Innovative Media Lab wall or the window. To be an artist means never to avert one's eyes. That's Akira Kurosawa. Did some really fantastic films in Japan. We can talk about that another time. There are other associative trails there, but... I need to be going downstairs. Hang on. So, some associative trails. It's like going to the library to get a book that you found out about through Twitter because you're teaching a course, and you go look for the book that has to do with the course you're teaching, and then you browse the stacks a little bit, and you see 
other things next to that book. And it kind of gives you an idea of the scale of what we're talking about in educational reform and how many ways people have to describe what it is that they think they're doing or they think need to be reformed. And then you pick up the book and you think, wow, this is kind of an interesting design. Well, who designed it? And there's something in the book that will help you know that. And then there's another way that an associative trail might begin with all of that. And then you go down to the little self-checkout, which I confess I really enjoy doing because it goes dee dee you know, when you get the book checked out successfully. I don't know, it's just one of those things, very silly, but uh, that's one of the things you should know about me. I, I am prone to fits of that silly thing. Um, and then the first thing you know, you're, you're out in the clear blue day, a beautiful June day here on the campus of Virginia Commonwealth University, and your head's full of thoughts, and you think, well, now where are they going to take me? Because in the end, that's the thing that we want to think about. When Vannevar Bush talks about associative trails, he says, essentially, they're a picture of the way your mind operates. And if you know how your mind operates, you can kind of intervene. You can actually make use of it. It's like one of those lucid dreams where you know you're dreaming, so you actually make yourself do something or experience something in your dream. I used to try to make myself fly, and sometimes it would actually work. Um, so what you make of your associative trails, what you make when you think about the way you're thinking, is a big part of what Van Iver Bush is talking about when he's talking about this crazy invention called the MEMEX, which we think stands for Memory Extender, and talks about not just the machine, but the way in which the machine reveals the brain of the user to the user in ways that can then be shared and built upon. Sort of like books, sort of like conversation, uh, but in a way that is able to be tracked a little more effectively, like with a hashtag. Some stuff to think about. It may be more interesting than we think. It may be just as promising as we may think. More on this in a little bit. So here is where it all ends up, back in my office. I don't have to talk like whoever that was, Marlon somebody. It wasn't Marlon Brando. Anyway, he used to be on Wild Kingdom, and he would say things like, we're on the trail of the murderous gazelle. We're sneaking up onto the three-spotted cheetah. And, you know, it was like being at a golf game except with predators, uh, which maybe is the case with some golfers. I don't know. At any rate, back here in my office, thinking about thinking, thinking about associative trails. Lots of times my students will say to me, Dr. C, I had a thought, but it's really random. And what I say is human beings can't do random. There's always some pattern there. There's always some kind of connection. It may be a good connection, it may be a, a trivial connection, it may end up not mattering much, but don't rule anything out. Don't think that anything is necessarily meaningless, and don't think that anything is necessarily self-explanatory. Find that sweet spot. But the thing that really gets to me in this essay is the first word of the last paragraph. Now, that's, yeah, I am showing off a little bit. I've taught this a lot, so I actually know what that word is. But you can memorize it, too, and you can look it up really quickly. It's the first word of the last paragraph, and it really is, for me, one of the things that the whole essay kind of builds toward. And it's the big question, and we'll be asking ourselves this question at several points during the course. Does it matter if we can think better? Does it matter to us as a species if we actually learn things in school that help us use our minds more effectively? And especially if that effective use means that we have to rethink what school itself is doing. These are really interesting questions to me. They're basic questions about what it means to be human. And I think Van Iver Bush was uh, fascinated by those questions, both as a person who did a lot of scientific research, but also as someone who had lived through the invention of what is still the deadliest weapon we have ever developed as a species, which is um, the atomic and then later on the hydrogen bomb. So he's writing, as we may think, right after the atomic bomb has been developed, or is finishing it then. And this is a question he's confronting. If we know ourselves better as a species, if we actually are able to use our minds more effectively, will that help us become better as a species, kinder to the planet, kinder to each other, and help us solve problems faster? Or will that kind of amplified ingenuity merely lead us to do more of the deadly things that we've done with our brains so far. His idea was if we could build a machine that would help us understand and experience and share the way our brains work um, with greater power and greater detail and greater persistence over time, 
that that actually might help. It might not be as bad as we may think. But that's an open question, uh, probably a little too general for an inquiry project, although I never know, uh, but certainly one that we're going to be circling back to again and again as we go through this experience together. So, until next time, uh, keep inquiring, never avert your eyes, make sure you read the labels, you never know where the codes are, and keep those dreams going.